Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest is Greg Snyder, the president of the Thunder Bay and District Injured Workers Support Group. So Greg, uh, before we took a break, we were talking about the, the kind of the cost shifting that's taking place there through the experience rating program mm -hmm. at the, the WSIB. Uh, you were telling me as well, there's a number of areas where that, that cost shifting is, is taking place. Uh, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I, I, over the past um, several years, um, they've been slowly cutting down the number of claims that they, they approve in WSIB, which means less people are qualifying for, for WSIB. And, you know, you can't tell me that there's less people getting injured in the workplaces. And, and certainly the stats don't purvey that when, when it comes to other... Um, deaths in, in workplaces have been dropped off, for example. Right, so deaths seem to come, be increasing there, don't yeah. so, so how come claims are dropping? Well, we think that they're tightening up the rules and they're making it, they're, they're, I think we're violating their own rules to, to disqualify people. Um, and what happens with that is those people who would normally receive WSAB benefits, which are covered under the employer, the employer pays, are now going to uh, CBP disability to get income, they're going to the ODSP office to get income, they're going to Ontario Works to get income, their, uh, their treatments and the medical care that is, they require because they were once on, uh, because they were injured at work, are now being covered by Ontario Health Insurance Plan instead of by the employer. And with that is all the stress that comes with it that, you know, because they're not getting the same treatments or the same care that they would get under um, under WSIB, they now have more serious health problems down the road because it's not getting treated early on. So people are getting shuffled off yeah. from the workers' comp to other programs. Well, who knows when WSIB cuts them off what, mm -hmm. where they're going to go, but in fact they end up oftentimes on these other programs that are publicly funded as opposed to funded exclusively yeah. by the employer. Yes, and we have, um, there was a survey that was done um, in Street Smart, I think in Toronto, did a uh, survey and um, they asked people who were living on the street um, where you, we, you know, where you received an injury and 63% or 50 to 60% said it was work, it was a workplace. They were workplace injuries. So this was a survey on the street. of homeless people, homeless people yeah. in Toronto. And almost 60% said they were hurt at work. Yeah. So this is where some of these folks are ending up. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly where they're ending up. And um, dealing with WSIB over an extended period of time. Um, I know people who are heavily involved, you know, in, in the injured worker movement and who are continuing, you know, decades after they put in the first claim being denied for stuff that they've previously been approved for. And then they come back and they say, well, you know, I need that treatment again. You know, I'm getting the soreness. Oh, well, you know what? We're not approving this time. Well, I got approved for it two years ago. Why would I not be approved for it now? And these are people who have been involved in the organization. Imagine somebody who, who is learning about WSIB, who is, is, is fighting, has had to fight for a claim, and it's constantly, every time he puts in, it seems the first response from WSIB is to deny them. Eventually, you know, um, people start giving up and, and um, depression sets in and, and stuff. And if, if you're not getting the, the treatments and, and the stuff that you need, other health problems come up. And depression and, and mental health issues are, are going to be a big part of that. Yes, and, and uh, you know, as you know, the research we've been, we've been working together with uh, academics in six different universities across Ontario. And, and the one uh, researcher uh, published a paper last year uh, documenting 45% of the workers with a serious long-term injury end up depressed yeah. by dealing with the system. And um, I have, my, my partner is involved with, 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 the, with the OPSIM, Ontario Public Service of Wage Union. And you know, um, we've talked about cases where, where she's, she's dealt with somebody who is um, okay with filing uh, a complaint and, and, a pro and going through the process. And two years later, when it's still out there 
Uh, you know, the person who's gung ho to fill out those forms and do the work is now going, uh, oh yeah, I guess I gotta fill those out, eh? Well, yeah, the ones you're supposed to fill out. It's depression has set in, right? The, the hopelessness of the situation has taken over and they no longer see the need to do all those forms because they don't see it, it as producing anything. Or if it produces something, it only produces it on a temporary basis. Um, I, I was stunned when I, I joined the group and within a year joining the group, we're, we're passing motions to, to have somebody go and take suicide to assist in, in how, how to deal with um, people who are thinking about suicide and considering suicide and stuff. And it never dawned on me that workers who were injured in the workplace were in a position where they were contemplating suicide. And yet we were talking about people we were worried about. And at every meeting we, you know, we had, it was somebody that we were worried about. Yeah. You know, and they've you know, gone over to check on so and so, and and it was just, it, it's shocking, but it, it's so horrifically sad that in a society with as much wealth as we have, and in a corporate society with a corporations that have as much wealth that we have, that we have people who are struggling, and not because of small businesses, but because some of these people you work for large corporations that make big bucks. So I understand that one of the actions uh, that, that the Thunder Bay and the provincial group are taking is to uh, look at legal challenges around the behavior at the WSIB. And, and you've got a guest coming to town uh, coming up shortly uh, about that. Can you tell me about that? Yes, we have, we have somebody coming up on our annual general meeting is being held on November the 12th at seven o'clock at the Labour Centre. That's and Wednesday, November 12th. Yes, and we have Merith, I keep getting her name wrong, Merith coming up uh, from Toronto and she is, she works with Avco, Avco? And uh, so she's gonna be speaking about the legal challenge, is it the one that she's involved with. Um, she's gonna be discussing that and sharing what's happening with that, with the rest of us. I believe somebody's already filed a complaint um, outside of these four that we're talking about, somebody's already, uh, injured workers already filed a, a human rights complaint against them. Right, so, so uh, the lawyer from Toronto will be coming up uh, Wednesday the 12th, 7 o'clock, yep. the Lakehead Labour Centre, that's open to everybody? That is open to everybody. The no, more is there, the better. Is there, is there a cover charge or anything? Nope, um, well, there'll probably be something there for a donation to the group. Um, I think we do a 50-50 draw at most of our meetings, so there'll be a chance to, to make some money. Um, but uh, yeah, it's open to absolutely everybody. Um, we, uh, we have a few vacancies on a board, so if, if you want to think about doing that, you can come out, but we promise we won't arm twist you to joining or anything. Um, it's entirely up to Give you. Give me that arm. <laughs> so we won't, we won't do any of that, but uh, it would be, we'd love to have as many people out as, as possible. It would be great. Okay, we have to take another break. Uh, we'll come back in just a few minutes. Please stay with us.